This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Marty! And guess. I just want to point out that as much as I rag on Marty and make fun of her for her crazy outlandish theories, her theories are like 50% of the time completely on the ball, and she's managed to call a major plot twist in every Ace Attorney game except Trials and Tribulations. Have I? So in, in, the, in the first game, you called that both Manfred von Kammer and Damon Gant were evil. Yeah. Well, it, they, they, it's common for butts to die. In the Watch second it. game, you called that Matt Ungren had scars under his hair. I did! I forgot about that. Uh, Trials and Tribulations was the one you were not able to call. Yeah. Uh, Apollo Justice, you kind of called that Christoph Gavin was going to be evil. Like, I was like, at this the very guy beginning. seems like a... Like, were, you, no. were you like, I bet he doesn't trust... Like, uh, I bet Phoenix doesn't trust him, and that's why he's having Apollo do it. Yeah. In Miles Edgeworth 1, you called that Callisto U was really Sheena. Oh yeah, but that was and, and then And then in this game, you were able to call that Simon Keyes was Dan Gustavia's son. All the way back in Case Free. Where he's like, where it's I like, did? yeah, where it's like, oh, like his son, their sons are still like missing. And you're like, is it wimp guy at the circus? <laughs> <laughs> and then I think you're like, nah, probably not because he has different hair color. Yeah, that's what I, <laughs> wow. I'm on fire. I'm, gl I'm glad that you weren't at least able to call that Simon Keys was evil because that's like one of the greatest plot twists. I mean, the only thing I would have been, the only way I would have been able to call it is if like, because when I first heard um, John Doe, when I first heard like Shelley DeKiller like talking randomly about like, oh, he even uses body doubles, blah, blah. I was like, I bet this is going to be important, but I don't really care right now. Oh. And so I think if I had like examined that further and I was like, he cut Simon Keys monkeys like it would be it, it's it's tough to determine another thing i was going into this i was really afraid that you were gonna get spoiled on simon being the killer because marty actually got like a part of reading like some of the end credits quotes for another video basically yeah. being a voice actor yeah and one cool. of one of the parts she got was regina and they wanted her to do both Ace, uh injustice for all and the a second investigations game and i'm like wait did she spoil that well, simon's the killer at the end and she did i'm like don't do that don't marty. do that one <laughs> i was like oh can i do all of them except prosecutor's path they were like oh yeah, yeah, yeah this, this is fine okay cool anyhow let's let's start because it's been two minutes i just had to talk about it. all right so we're cross-examining keys again and he's basically like <laughs> think about it can any one of my actions really be considered a crime yes you incited others to commit murder and they did so if proof of that was established you would be charged as if you yourself committed the murders um i know i heard it just a while ago but what's the technical term again it's instigating murder, okay. Blaze, Patricia Rowland, and Knightley. Their crimes are unforgivable, of course. However, the one who pulled the strings from behind the scenes and drove them all to murder was none other than you, Simon Keyes. I also think that, um, uh, Blaze just is bad anyway, and he was oh, also Oh, that's 100%. I think it was like, he was pulling strings on everybody, and then Simon Keyes was like, huh, psychs to be you. I pulled your strings, bud. Yeah, <laughs> like, so what's what makes Simon such an interesting and great villain for me is like, he's basically the lesser of all of the evils in the game. Who's basically like, these old people are all horribly evil, I'm gonna make them pay. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, you really do speak your mind freely, but you know... I instigated murder? There's not a single word about that in the letter, is there? This also, your voice does sound like evil Buster Baxter. <laughs> exactly. Like, that's exactly... Arthur! <laughs> yeah. I killed everyone. <laughs> yeah, like, literally. There's not a single word. Oh, does that surprise you? You'd reach the same conclusion if you examined it. Hmm, given his composure, I'd say he's not bluffing. Does this mean that every single word in his letters had been carefully calculated? It means that Mr. Wellington loves large bananas. Clearly. Well, I guess you could say this is like teaching a monkey to climb a tree. Unless you can somehow prove that I caused those murders, you've got nothing on me. Ergo, you can't accuse me of instigating murder. <laughs> what a shame, Mr. Edgeworth. I wonder if, like, are, like, Simon and Regina, like, a thing? No. Okay, okay. No. They're just like co-working. She's like, this is she's, pretty She's his weird. boss. Yeah, basically. If I'd said the word kill even once, I guess it could be considered instigation. I think that we have a letter. You're going to have a killer time. That's yeah. it. I know you instigated the murders. Hmm, perhaps I should let you in on this, Mr. Edgeworth. 
Actually, I was the one who ordered Blaze the Best to kill Jill Crane. What? You told me yourself. But you know, the funny thing is, it means absolutely nothing if you have no proof. I mean, there's no way I'd ever say something like that! No way, no way, no way! Nah, that's certainly true. It means absolutely nothing if I can't prove it. If there was some evidence that could prove what he said over the phone. Well, maybe I did say it, but there's no way for you to prove it. I will say, too, the other thing that, um, is interesting is that I'm surprised Simon Keyes was involved with the first case. He was? Yeah. Yeah. It, he was. Because he, he's not even introduced. The only case he wasn't responsible for was the third one, and he still played a big role in that by being, like, the lost son of the killer. Yeah. How was this game, man? Bro. How was... <laughs> That case was so stupid long. But it was I, good. It was good, but like, I don't know. I agree. I think the third case in this game is my least favorite. And it's most yeah. people's favorite, which is weird. Most people's favorite. Because they like how it ties in with like DL6 and the original. It was basically yeah. the case that started it all. It is, but... Mm. Maybe you did say it. Did you or didn't you? <laughs> it doesn't really matter whether I did or didn't. That's not what's important. I'm sure you know full well, Mr. Edgeworth. There's no way to prove it. There's no way any proof could exist! Ugh. Until I find some sort of proof, my arguments are meaningless. Should I press him to draw out more information or review the evidence? At any rate, I must find some way to break through his defense. He confessed to me over the phone. He told me he had Blaze kill Miss Crane. If only there was some evidence that could prove what he said over the phone. Um, so, I have two options here. So it's probably that one. Maybe I did say it. Um, doesn't Gumshoe have a device that lets you review footage of things? He has, like, a video. Uh. Okay, otherwise, the other option is, were there any security cameras on us when we were, um... Hanging out? Um, no. no. That's for the Grand Tower. Okay. Third option. Look at the letter. Which one? The the letter Jill Crane, bro. It's like killing two birds with one stone. So you want it to try that? It says from K. I feel like, not on that statement, though. If I had kill even once. I feel like that was cool. That was smart. But it wasn't kill in that context. Yeah. Miss, Mr. Keys, this piece of evidence. Mr. Edgeworth, why don't you take that back? I haven't said anything yet. You don't have to say anything. After all, the look on your face tells me you're about to make an idiotic bluff. Ah, what's wrong with my face? He's one tough cookie, but... Miles, you'll be okay, right? I'll be fine, Mr. Shields. I won't give up here. <laughs> I thought you'd say that. Uncle Ray believes in you. You're an Edgeworth, after all. I'm sure you'll reveal the whole truth for us. Indeed. I shall expose the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Um... There's no way for you to prove it. That's probably the statement, because that was the one that we were like, Bro, what the heck? You're so mm. rude. <laughs> rude. Um... A bug? Is that it? Was planted inside the Yadagross's badge by the person in the yeah, red Yeah, that should work, right? Because wouldn't it have trapped footage? No? Nope. Okay. Because I'm like, I don't know. That, that I thought that was a good idea, too. Nicole. Oh! Is that what we need? The tape recorder? Okay. I had the right idea, wrong evidence. Yeah, essentially. It is my firm conviction that you instigated the murders. After all, you told me so yourself. Hmm, perhaps I should let you in on this, Mr. Edgeworth. Actually, I was the one who ordered Blaze to Best to kill Jill Crane. What? Why would Blaze to Best listen to him, though? He basically just sent him a letter being like, Hey, Jill's gonna try to kill you. You should kill her first. Bro. Oh, you know what? There's no- Ah, uh, what a thoughtful person telling there's me no, to kill there's someone. There's no return address. Oh, no big deal. <laughs> Basically. It's from the very big, big circus. circus. That's, That's kind weird. of strange. <laughs> Did I say that? I 
I really don't remember. You may think you can deceive us as much as you want, but unfortunately for you, unfortunately, you used a bug to eavesdrop on our conversations. But there was someone else who wiretapped that bug of yours and recorded the whole thing. It was recorded. In other words, the conversation between you and that clown is recorded on that tape. <laughs> Lane Z says, a schemer drowns in his own schemes, and this is what he meant. Miss Swift, I'd like to listen to your tape. Roger! I'll be honest, when I'm my first playthrough, I kind of thought she was going to be the mastermind. Nicole. I thought she could have been, but I thought, mm, <laughs> no, she's kind of a, an idiot. Like, Simon Keys being the killer, he wasn't even the person I least suspected. He was, like, the person I never suspected. I thought he was twist. done and over with. That's the problem. Yeah. Ah, it's right about here. Mr. Edsworth, just court blah, 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 Judge Courtney's cell phone is ringing. Who is this? Are you the person who ambushed Kay? Mr. Edgeworth, I want to listen in on this, too. Very well. This is where it starts. Well, I must say. Huh? That's odd. What's wrong? Well, there ain't nothing recorded past this point. What? Why? Why wasn't it recorded? <laughs> Too bad, so sad! Did you really think I'd leave any incriminating evidence behind? The bug I planted has a special feature. It can be turned on and off with a remote control. What? That sort of thing exists? Certainly, remote controlled listening devices do exist. However... Are you saying you switched off the device so that your own voice would not be recorded? PRECISELY! Impossible! You couldn't have done that unless you knew you were being recorded! Objection. Isn't it obvious I knew? I guess uh, you just don't get it. You could call it a hunch. I had a feeling I was being wiretapped. Miss Swift, was it? I figured things out because you knew about the kidnapping. Don't tell me. You were listening in on that conversation? That's right! Though, come to think of it, I'm surprised you didn't realize it until now. Some genius prosecutor you turned out to be Mr. Edgeworth. Ah! Oh my, and what was the end result of all this? Ah, since you don't have any proof of the instigation charges, it's game over. Ah! Mr. Prosecutor, was my recording no help to you at all? Ain't there something, anything at all in my recording? Miss Swift. Pretty sure that didn't she have that like sound of the he no she had the sound of the helium I don't remember what else she had. Hmm. Okay. Yes. The bug was planted in your badge, right? Do you have any ideas? How do you expect me to come up with an answer right off the top of my head? You were the only one who came into contact with the culprit. Objection. How unsightly! You're all fussing over useless evidence. Let's move on to the next topic. Next. The only thing I can figure out is, um, how did he get the bug on her in the first place? Did he ever- Because he drugged her and brought her to the oh, tower. I, he easily could have pointed it there. I, yeah, you're right. What's this? He seems a bit eager to change the topic of the conversation. You were the only one who came into contact with the culprit! Only Kay came into contact with Simon. If any sound was recorded at the time she was with the culprit. Miss Swift, how long have you been recording? Since two nights ago, I reckon. Since two nights ago. In that case, when could a conversation with Simon possibly have been recorded? Why? Two nights ago, last night, or this morning. Why was she recording the bug for two nights? She didn't She was trying to that. find more evidence of Gordy. But, but how did she locate the bug and then was like, I'll just keep recording for two nights straight. What? That I'm not sure. She, she wasn't necessarily recording the bug, but she was recording with her, like, device. She was running around, I guess. Well, two, was it two nights ago that she was, that Kay was hit up? I think so, yeah. Okay. Two nights ago, Simon brought Kay to the roof. If we listen to the recording from that time frame, 
Miss Swift, please let us listen to the recording from two nights ago. Man, Kay has gone through a lot. She, like, lost all her memory and then got it back yippy-jippy. <laughs> yep. Yippy-jippy. Uh huh uh, Okie dokie. This is the sound of a hot air balloon. That's right. At the time, Simon was carrying Kay in a hot air balloon. Ergo, he was near Kay. Isn't there anything recorded? Uh, that was... A, a gunshot! <laughs> it seems you were quick to deactivate the bug. However, you were a little too late. You can't run anymore. That gunshot ties you to the case. Huh? What are you saying? There's no gun involved in this case, is there? No. There should be someone connected to the case who fired a gun. Let's strike with the evidence that points to that person. Which piece of evidence connects the gunshot to the case? Um... It's probably something you forgot about. I'm sure. I don't think it's anything on this first page of evidence, is it? It might be. It might be? What does it say? Is it just the autopsy thing from that guy? That's crushed to death. Yeah. Bone fractures, residue, resulting from extreme pressure. But that doesn't have the sound of a gunshot. But there's gunpowder residue! Yep. I was trying- I was like, there's no gun in that. It's written right here in the Body Doubles Autopsy Report. Gunpowder residue was detected on his right hand. <sighs> Where was Kay at the time this gunshot was recorded? That's right, she was being carried to the roof of the Grand Tower in your balloon. And as it turns out, there were a few more people on that very same rooftop at the time. You mean the double and me? Ah, certainly, after we talked for a brief moment. The body double noticed something and had me leave before him. Now what if the gunshot rang out after that? We can clearly hear it in the recording. I doubt that you wouldn't have noticed it. Do you intend to feign ignorance until the very end? That's nothing more than mere conjecture. What we heard on the recording was not just a gunshot. If you listen closely, you can hear the bullet hitting something. If the body double was aiming at Simon, then... The bullet may have struck which piece of evidence? Uh, was there something in the balloon that he would have struck? Rawr. You want to um, just try the balloon? Sure. The body double likely fired the gun at the balloon. If we assume that the bullet hit something, it would have been the balloon's basket. Let's examine it immediately! There's a long rope all coiled up inside. We must examine it closely for any signs of it being cut by a bullet. Got it! Mr. M.I.B., you start from that end. Y yeah Nothing here. We're here. Nope. There's no sign of it being hit by a bullet. There's nothing on this end either. I guess it didn't hit the rope. Let's not waste any time. On to the next spot. That would make sense for the claim to be bad. There's a gas tank here. It's attached to the basket. Um... I don't think we would be looking at this tank right now if a bullet had hit it. It would have blown up. Oh, whoops, I forgot. In fact, neither Simon or I would still be here. We would have blown sky high. Sky high. Let's look elsewhere, then. Oh, the bottom. This hole. It's a bullet hole. Also, I think there's some residue that suggests blood? A bullet hole was found in the basket. You won't be able to talk your way out of this one. 
Did you know I like to shoot my own balloon? <laughs> it's a part of the circus thing I do. <laughs> Lion balloon data updated. <laughs> How do you intend to explain the gunshot and the bullet hole? <laughs> so you figured it out. You're good. I guess it's impossible to hide anything from you. Spit it out already! Okay, okay, no need to be impatient. Two nights ago. It happened when I was riding the balloon to the rooftop. I saw the body double and you, Miss Courtney, on the roof. Talk about a surprise. Only the double noticed me. He told Miss Courtney to leave ahead of him. Thank you for being a good person. Fake president. He was not a good person in the slightest. Good fake president. He Save then, the lady. He then pointed a gun at me and fired. Why did he want to shoot down the balloon? It's simple. The body double had intended to kill Miss Courtney. Kill me? That's right! You talked to the double about John, didn't you? Well, it's not like the body double would have met with you otherwise. From his point of view, it was like showing him evidence that he was a fake. You mean, he was afraid of Judge Courtney because she knew about John's past? Afraid? <laughs> That's exactly right! The body double was a coward after all. I even remember how he, his hands were trembling when he fired the gun at my balloon. Remember the first case where he was like, I hate the sound of guns. They're so scary. Yeah. <laughs> Are we all clear now? I was only there by chance. Just a friendly witness who was passing by. Oh, you know. <laughs> you know how it is. Yeah, you know how it, it is. is. <laughs> all right, well, um, I have some problems with this. <laughs> a lot of problems. Around what time was that? I think it was around 11 p.m. It should coincide with the time of Miss Courtney and company that were on the roof, right? Yes, it was indeed around that time. There doesn't seem to be any contradictions. However, the time frame is important. And it was at that moment. I saw the body double and you, Miss Courtney, on the roof. Talk about a surprise. <laughs> Not the good kind, either. Are you saying this rooftop rendezvous is beyond your expectations? There's no way I could have known about that beforehand! Well, once the dust settled, I could guess what would have happened, though. The double had intended to kill Miss Courtney. Hey, did you realize that? No, I did not realize that. It's because you were blabbing on and on about that kid. Th that's I... Ugh... What kind of mother are you? If things had gone badly, your kid wouldn't have died because of you! I'm your opponent, not her. Don't change the conversation. Judge Courtney, I'd like you to please leave this to me. My apologies, Prof Prosecutor Edgeworth. Oh, goddess of law, please watch over this man and grant him aid. <laughs> You're making me laugh! This lady didn't even notice the balloon! Only the double noticed me. He told Miss Courtney to leave ahead of him. He was gonna shoot her inside the tower. He had her leave ahead of him? Didn't you say the body double had planned to kill her? Maybe he thought it would be bad if someone saw the scene of the murder. At the time, no one knew that the president was a fake, right? Once he got the info on John, he'd be able to kill both mother and son whenever he wanted. Thank goodness he's dead! Now you're both safe. You should be happy. <laughs> Whatever emotions you have towards this man, please put them aside until it's all over. For now, please continue your story. <laughs> As you wish. And so that cowardly body double must have panicked when an eyewitness suddenly appeared from the skies. He then pointed a gun at me and fired! The bullet struck the balloon's basket cleanly. I panicked and quickly tried to get away so he wouldn't shoot me down, but... Talk about a close call! You say you tried to get away right then? That's right! Is there a problem? Is there a problem with his statement? I mean, obviously he dumped K off. He's probably gonna be like, I didn't have K in the basket, what are you talking about? You already about? admitted to that! <laughs> no, he has, he's not admitted to the kidnapping yet. There's a problem. You must have placed K on the rooftop. You couldn't have gotten away before then, correct? Yeah, that's right. I forgot. 
After the body double fired one shot, he entered the hatch to the 51st floor. Oh, wait, is he admitting to it? I yes, didn't, I didn't he was he admitting did. to it. Already. Okay. I looked around for a bit and then landed on the roof. That's why I was Please like... add that statement to your testimony. Yeah. Sure, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. After the double fired one shot, he entered the hatch to the 51st floor. You mean the hatch that leads to the hidden storeroom for the black market auction. Black market auction? Huh? I don't really want to remember, but that was two days ago, right? Indeed. The black market auction was held on the 50th floor of the Grand Tower. A lot of people must have been coming and going through the storeroom during the incident. Indeed. If the body double truly did enter the storeroom as Simon said, it's strange that no one noticed him. The problem here is when this incident occurred. If we know the precise moment, then a certain piece of evidence may come in handy. Eyewitness testimony from the balloon. So that means if Simon hadn't come... Judge Courtney would probably have been in danger. So wouldn't it mean he saved her life? The motive behind Mr. Key's actions was probably not so noble. After all, this man was there to commit a crime just like the fake president. To expose his crimes, I'll need to listen carefully to his testimony. That's like one person trying to go and rob a dollar store, and then someone comes in and shoots the guy who's robbing <laughs> the dollar store, and then go robs a bank. No, it's more like a kidnapper comes to like a place and sees someone trying to kill another person, and then kills the guy before he can do it. <laughs> yeah. There must be an opening somewhere. He's like, only I get to commit crimes. <laughs> So that's you think the it's one. that one? Well, I mean, it's added, so therefore... <laughs> it's always the one that's added. It's always the one that's added. There would be no reason why you'd add something random. Um... He entered the hatch to the 51st floor. Uh, do we have the gun handy that's like, Oh, it was fired two times! No, oh, we don't um, have a gun as evidence. Can we look at the Grand Tower? If you please. The 51st Black floor. Market. Auctions were held on the 51st floor. There's a secret en entrance to the 51st mm. floor. Yeah, so that's normal. That's fine. Um, Wait, how many pa Do we have... Oh my gosh, we have five pages of evidence in this case. We have a lot. Um, Boys had gloves. It couldn't have been. <laughs> um... I'm trying to think of what actually was happening though during that case. Go back to it's it must be the first page of evidence, right? It must be Maybe, maybe not. Um What is this? Is it the Mozilla doll? No, is that why he's no. going for it? Oh. Lotus? Oh, is it just Lotus? Yeah, oh, he yeah. never passed through. I forgot about Lotus testimony, I was like, this isn't going to be important at all. <laughs> Once again, you lied. Lied? The body double could not have entered the storeroom on the 51st floor two nights ago. He was too fat. <laughs> he got it stuck. He, it's like Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, it's like, or, um, what is it, Snuffy? Snuffy. From, from... It's getting hard to ho, ho, ho. Miss Hart's testimony proves it. What?! How can you trust that sham journalist testimony? To be fair, nobody should trust that <laughs> yeah, sham journalist. <laughs> What'd you say? You can't insult my mentor like that. Two nights ago, that lady was stalking out the 51st floor. Given that, just how did that body double leave the roof? He jumped. Indeed. That is what we must now prove. If he did not use the elevator or the 51st floor to leave the roof, then only one route remains. Baloo. How did the body double leave the roof without using the elevator or the 51st floor? <laughs> My balloon! My balloon! <laughs> the body double flew. <laughs> he flew. He flew. <laughs> he flew? Simon Keys, he rode in your balloon. Oh, I thought he was gonna be. He sprouted wings. <laughs> Senor no, de la no. Cruz, he can fly! He can fly! <laughs> no, um, okay, so Simon. I'm just trying to picture this. Simon Keys. Oh, I gotta drop off K. Do you? Oh, the president just oh, the shot president at me. Want to ride in the balloon? Yeah, we want to Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, I think they were kind of like, I'll, I'll let you go if you let me go. <laughs> hey, hey, stop joking around. Why would I have needed to give the body double a lift? The elevator had a security camera, and the 51st floor was being watched by Miss Hart. My, my car broke down. 
Can can I go on? The maybe balloon? maybe Lada just got paid two twenties by the president. It's possible. Your balloon. Your balloon was the only way the body double could have left the roof. Objection. <laughs> At the circus, we often perform dangerous stunts in order to surprise the audience. You think you've got me cornered? <laughs> Sorry, but the show ends here. What? Hey you, Lada was it? I'd like to ask you something. Are you saying you stood watch on the 51st floor the entire time without any breaks? Well, I mean, I had to go use the bathroom at some point. Well, wreck and course, there ain't no mistakes in my testimony. Really now? But didn't the sound of Mr. Edgeworth's assistant falling into the storeroom cause you to faint? Um, you shouldn't have known that. I didn't mention it before, but after that, I might have dozed off a little. To be more precise, I fainted. Well, something like that. So something did happen! Miss Hart, I have determined the sound that made you faint. It was likely the sound of Kay falling in onto the storeroom floor. W what's your point? Nobody's perfect! <laughs> Look at her, Mr. Edgeworth. That's the kind of person you're relying on. I don't want to rely on Lotta. Kay fell into the storeroom after the body double had left the roof. In that case, <laughs> I have a theory on how things happen. After that cowardly body double fired a shot at me, he went and hid in the shadows until Kay fell into the storeroom. What? So, so what if he was hiding? Good grief, you guys still haven't noticed. What if the body double stayed hidden until Vada had fainted? And then he went down to the 51st floor. That's a Th dumb... That, that can't be. That's a dumb thing. <laughs> Precisely. The locked room mystery on the roof has been unlocked. Gah! Gwah! He even said it in my voice! <laughs> but wait, there's more! I told the hidden body double about John Marsh. That's why he attacked John the next day during practice, but got himself killed instead. In other words, the one who murdered the body double was none other than John! John had no motive to kill the body double. He knew. He knew he was the real president's son. <laughs> and how would he have known that? Because I told him so. In a letter. W what did you say? That is a lie! Yup! It's all a lie! Hmm? But then again, maybe not. Maybe I really did tell him. Right, John? It's true that I caused Mozilla's head to fall. But I didn't know about my dad until today. I'm not lying. Oh, really? I wonder about that. See, here's the thing. We know that Simon has the world's greatest impressions ever. Maybe... Cause, cause Simon had a hold... Simon had a hold of his phone, right? Of, of Courtney's phone? No. No. We had hold of we Courtney's had, phone. I feel like he could've, like, gotten a ha hold of it and been like... Like, done a perfect Courtney impression, then like... Hmm. I don't know. I found it about the head falling thanks to the bug. Now, if you were the one who caused it to fall, and the body double was crushed to death... <laughs> that settles it! You're the culprit! You successfully carried out your revenge! Congratulations! All the pieces of the puzzle are now in place, as Mr. Edgeworth would say. The logic fits. Now then, any rebuttals? I've never said that in my life! <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I mean, even if John Marsh it's like, Bro, you murdered somebody. Self-defense? Uh, accidental. Accidental, and accidental, he's a kid. And he's a kid. He's not going to jail. Right. It's more like, this dude's getting off scot-free. The murder of the double. Manipulating humans into fighting with each other? Sounds just like me, right? I did the same thing to Knightley and Blaze. At any rate, there's no way the body double could have gone for a ride in my balloon. The double was crushed by the monster's head, right? And who was it that caused the monster's head to fall? Do you understand now, who the Body Double's real killer is? The truth that I provided them with gave, gave them a big motive for murder. Get it? Those two tried to kill each other because of the truth you're so fond of. I... Uh, impossible! Hey, you detectives over there! Hurry up and arrest this murderer! What's wrong? Why aren't you moving? D Damn! <laughs> I thought so. Just admit it. In the end, aren't you all the same as Blaze and the Body Double? No. You ignore the Prime Suspect and come after me without any evidence. 
How easily it can be distorted to best suit your needs, this truth and law you all believe in. That is by no means true. <laughs> if you're not going to arrest anyone, maybe I should have a talk with the policeman outside. If I tell them that John Marsh is the killer, they'll be forced to take action. Simon Keys, your testimony isn't over yet. <laughs> really? I figured you'd try to stop me, Mr. Edgeworth. You don't have any evidence, do you? Which means there's no chance for you to win, right? But if you still plan to stop me, you should be prepared to take on this much risk! Okay. What? Th that much? <laughs> he actually can see it. <laughs> it's only natural. After all, the fate of the true culprit, John Marsh, is at stake here. Hey, Miles. Why don't you take a nice deep breath? M Mr. Shields? At times like this, you should take a breather and think back. Defense attorneys always remain calm in a pinch and smile in the face of danger. The point of contention between your logic and his claims lies in the body double's escape route. How's about, for example, we think of it like this. What's important isn't whether or not the body double got on the balloon, but rather, if we were to assume he did, what circumstances would have allowed for that? Turn my thinking around. Well, all I'm doing is a cheap imitation of your old man. Did it help? Circumstances that would have allowed the body double to get on the balloon. That's right. The body double not only had a large build, but he also had a gun. And in spite of that, no traces of sleeping drugs were found in his system. Which means... It can't be. Mr. Edgeworth, are you ready yet? Hope you haven't forgotten about this! <laughs> It'll be this much! Ugh, this is bad. I must break his testimony somehow. Yeah, we get a 50% penalty if we get anything wrong. <laughs> Hopefully but, we have safe stage. Yeah. All right, that's Sorry. it. That's, that's going to be it for this episode, Sonic everybody. Like, how dare you actually cheat my <laughs> system? <laughs> Basically. Thanks for watching, everyone. Next time, uh, next recording session, I think we'll finish up the game. Oh, but it, really? But, but okay. it might be split into two episodes. Okay. So, look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless. I mean, Lord knows we're going to have a lot of credit stuff to read.